Just in the weeks preceding the George Floyd video, there were a couple of other videos that came out. Yeah. One was an encounter in Central Park. Mm -hmm. A white woman tells a black bird watcher that if he doesn't stop taping her after he had told her to put her dog on a leash, which was required in that part of the park, she tells him if he doesn't stop taping her, she's going to call the police and tell them that a black man is threatening her life. Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. What did you see and hear in that tape? I saw white privilege on full display and the full realization of white people that they can weaponize the police, that the police are their private constabulary, that if they just feel like they're maybe losing an argument, <laughs> they can call the police. They're going to lead with the race issue because they know that the police will come and view the scene in a very particular way. They know. That's why when white people say, we didn't know, when we, they see these videos and they say, we didn't know it was this bad and we, we, we didn't know, they do know. They know that the state works for them. And they know that the state and, and, the, and law enforcement is embedded with the same narratives that they likely grew up with. And so she tells this black man to his face, she knows she's being videotaped, that she is going to weaponize the New York City Police Department. She's going to weaponize them against him if he doesn't stop filming her. There is an African-American man. I am in Central Park. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. It's a powerful moment and moment for pause for us to think about the kind of power that we put into the hands of the average white person who believes that they are deputized to control the movements of black people. This is actually what existed after the Civil War with the creation of black codes, where black people could be questioned by any white person and asked to show their papers showing their employment, that some white person employed them, and that therefore they had the right to be on a public road. That's how they used to try to police us after the Civil War. After we were theoretically free from slavery, they created the, these, these state codes and city ordinances that controlled our conduct. And that's what you see when you see, you know, all of these people who call 911 on black people having a barbecue or standing outside their house or whatever they're calling about. Teenagers it's going to a teen swim party. Teenagers going to a swim party. is the, the fundamental belief of most white people that they have the right to question a black person's legitimacy and essentially ask the black person to show their freedom papers essentially to show their to show that they have the right to enter this building to be in this hallway to be in the gym we saw recently right you know tell show me that you work in this building where do you live um, this is extraordinary but it is, it is directly connected to this period after slavery in which white people basically deputized themselves to be able to do this, to question black people in public spaces.